Hello, I am Taylor, and I am 29 years old. In my life, I have been on a rocky road most of the time, but I would go through all those years of torture all over again to become who I am today. To move forward with this story, I need to start from the very beginning. I was born and raised in the small town of Fairfield, Iowa. Growing up, it was just me and my mum. My dad struggled with alcoholism. From what my mum tells me, he lacked stability as an adult. I don't remember much because when he left I was only three, and ever since then he has never been a part of the picture. After my dad left, my mum's life took a turn for the worst, and she struggled to cope. Occasionally, we received financial help from my grandparents' side, which was a great relief. To support our family, my mum took on several shifts at a diner owned by Richard and Eleanor Evans. I attended school with their son Ethan, my ex-husband. Initially, we did not get along, but as we grew older, we developed a special connection and became close friends. We started dating when I was 16. Eleanor never seemed to approve of our relationship and started to keep her distance from my mother. The Evans family was not very wealthy either. Although the diner was decent, it didn't perform exceptionally well. Ethan used to confide in me about his parents' late-night arguments concerning the struggles of the business. Everything went downhill in the summer of 2016. During that time, I was working at a bookstore, and even though it would take a while, I was determined to save up for college. I knew that coming from a small town did not limit my dreams. In fact, I had always wanted to make it big in life. My mum had an accident. After fighting for her life in the hospital for a month, she finally gave in and passed away. I was devastated. She was the only blood family I had ever known apart from my grandparents. I was very lost in life. Ethan became my pillar of support and pulled me out of the darkness I was in. I decided to leave my job at the bookstore and take up my mum's spot at the diner as they offered better pay. Sadly, I had to give up on my college dreams and fend for myself since I was now on my own. Around eight months after my mum's passing, while we were closing up the diner together, Ethan surprised me with a proposal. With all my heart, I said yes to his proposal. The wedding was a small and intimate event, with only a limited number of people. After the wedding, I moved in with him to his parents' house. I could not help but feel something was off. Eleanor had always been focused on wealth and status. I remember my mum telling me how Eleanor would discuss the diner business flourishing and then find a girl for Ethan with an impressive background, someone from a wealthy family, a prestigious college graduate and so on. It was surprising to learn that Ethan's parents, especially Eleanor, were supportive of our marriage, but at that time, I was preoccupied with my own grief and did not think much about it. Despite being aware of our relationship, Eleanor indirectly expressed her belief that her son deserved to be with someone of higher standing. One day, when the diner was busy, Ethan's friend paid a visit. I was in the back doing the inventory when I caught snippets of Eleanor talking with Miles and his supposed new wife, Shyla. I made my way to the front to say hi, but Eleanor rushed me away. She didn't even introduce me properly. After they jetted off, Eleanor and I got into this interesting conversation. Well, that was Miles. Yeah, I've heard about him. He recently tied the knot, huh? Oh, indeed, he married Shyla. She's an absolute gem, you know. Fantastic upbringing and all. Both her parents are top-notch doctors down in Orlando. She's quite a remarkable woman herself, practicing law. Impressive, really. A catch like her is what any man dreams of. Lucky guy, that Miles. I wish my Ethan had that kind of luck, you know? What do you mean? Well, you know how it is, but sometimes I just wish he would have found someone who's... Well, more put together, like Shyla. It's funny how Ethan and Miles grew up together, liking the same things and 
Look at their wives now. Quite a contrast, huh? You know, Eleanor, it's not always about what society thinks. Ethan and I have a history together and our love runs deep. Sweetie, love is just a word sometimes. You're young and I get that you're in love, but my love for Ethan is unconditional and I believe that's the most precious thing in life. If you're claiming you love him so much, don't you think you deserve someone even better? I mean, when I look at you with your mum gone and your dad disappearing, who knows when, if it weren't for Ethan, could you even take care of yourself? What do you have to offer? I know these words sting, but they're kind of true, don't you think? Eleanor's words hit me hard and I was hurt. I tried to move past it, thinking maybe she needed time to accept me. Her comments really got to me and I was angry, but deep inside I couldn't help but wonder if there was a grain of truth in what she said. I was pretty insecure back then, which probably made her words cut even deeper. As for me and Ethan, things weren't as great as they used to be. I started questioning if he regretted marrying me. There was this growing distance between us and I blamed it on the challenges we faced with our dinner at first, but there was definitely a shift in our connection. It had been over a year and a half since we got married and during this time Eleanor occasionally made hurtful remarks about my background. Despite those comments, I tried my best to keep my cool and work on strengthening my relationship with Ethan. However, over time, I noticed a change in Eleanor's behaviour. Her comments went beyond the occasional snide remark and it was becoming clear that something was off. She was acting unpredictably. Then one evening at the dinner table, something unexpected happened. That particular moment ended up altering the course of my life in ways I could never imagine. How was your day, dear? It was all right. Actually, I've been wanting to announce something. Mom and Dad, I've been thinking about this for quite some time now. <clears throat> I think I'm going to invest some of my money in Taylor's education. It's always been her dream to go to college, and the diner's not doing well either anyway, so... The whole dining room went dead quiet when Ethan dropped that unexpected bomb. I was stunned. He hadn't even talked to me about it beforehand. You could feel the tension thick enough to cut with a knife and even Eleanor looked shaken. I mean, it's a sweet move and all, but maybe a little heads up before dinner would have been nice. What? Jesus Christ, Ethan! Mum, please don't overreact. Richard, why are you not saying anything? You cannot be seriously considering this. Let us hear Ethan out, dear. Ethan and I have not discussed this. Ethan, I think it might be a good call if we chat about this one-on-one -on -one first. No, you stop! You do not get to have a say in this. We took your mother in at the diner out of pity. Your alcoholic dad abandoned you. She was a single woman with an eight-year-old with no one to look out for her. You and your mother were nothing more than a sympathy project. We generously offered her a place in our diner for so long, and now you have managed to find your way into our house. My son deserved someone better than you. Someone from a well-off family. He should be living a suburban life of luxury and sophistication. But instead, you are with him now, living under our roof, leeching off my son's success. Honey, please hear me out. Do not leave. Ethan pleaded as I started to get up. I'm sorry, but I've had enough. After putting up with Eleanor's brutal and painful remarks, I just couldn't keep the tears at bay anymore. Trying to keep my composure, I excused myself from the dining table and practically fled into the kitchen for some space. I hovered close to the kitchen door, secretly hoping to catch bits of the conversation unfolding at the table. Through the muted voices, I managed to pick up Ethan's voice rising above the rest. Mum, can't you see what you're doing? I get it. Taylor isn't exactly your top choice for me and maybe it started out as some sort of crush or whatever, but look, she lost her mum and I feel like she needed someone. Maybe I messed up. Maybe I mixed up sympathy with love, but I just can't leave her hanging. She doesn't have anyone else in her corner. I'll admit, our romantic spark has kind of fizzled and I've grown apart from that, but Taylor's stuck in a tough spot. She's got nowhere else to turn. I've been thinking about paying for her college and maybe after that... We can figure out the divorce route or whatever. I just can't kick her out to the curb like that. We've been in this thing since we were 16, you know? 
Look how she stormed off. Oh my god, Ethan! I've seen this coming from the start. Taylor is nothing but trouble. You've let your emotions run wild. Pity isn't the foundation for a lasting relationship. You have grown, and it's time to think about your own future. This girl's problems should not be your burden. You cannot fix her life at the cost of ruining yours. I was completely floored by what I had just heard. Ethan had been with me out of pity. My heart shattered into a million pieces. Our whole marriage felt like a sham. At that moment, I knew what I had to do. I had to give him what he seemed to want. Her divorce. I made a bold choice to follow my dreams, and it led me straight to Los Angeles. Against all the odds, I figured I had nothing to lose. I snagged a small one-room apartment, setting up shop on a basic mattress. Relying on my waitressing experience, I aimed to score a gig at a restaurant and jump start this new chapter in LA. After a bit of hustling, I landed a job at a restaurant. I got into a rhythm of living paycheck to paycheck, but I wasn't about to let that slow me down. In a few months, I got a sweet promotion to work directly under the restaurant manager. Life started to shift for the better. I wasn't just scraping by anymore. My hard work and skills were earning me some major recognition. I ended up diving into the world of high-end hotel management, working with places that rolled out the red carpet for A-listers. As my career grew, so did my lifestyle. I traded my simple apartment for a lavish house. After the heartbreak with Ethan, I pretty much lost all hope in love. But then Harry walked into my life. Our paths crossed at my friend Alyssa's bougie birthday party bash on a frickin' yacht. I was still wrapping my head around all that fancy stuff rich people do. Harry had this magnetism about him, and he made me feel comfortable right away. He treated me with genuine respect and awe, like I wasn't some outsider but a legit part of his world. It turns out he was a big shot in LA's finance scene. Loaded family and all that. <laughs> it was seriously mind-blowing to find out that his dad... Mr. Johnson was a billionaire. Fast forward to our wedding day, we tied the knot at the stunning vineyard in Los Angeles, and just last month, we hit our first anniversary, which felt like a big deal. I'd be lying if I said I didn't think about Ethan and his family during all this time while I was out here hustling to make a name for myself. Eleanor's words had me feeling something. I kind of had this constant urge to prove to her that I could be successful on my own terms. And that it was her son who let me down. Life indeed surprises us in countless ways. And it certainly did surprise me last weekend when my father-in-law hosted a soiree at their sprawling mansion in Bel Air. While I was mingling, my gaze had got locked onto someone across the room and my heart basically went into overdrive. There, serving food, stood an elderly woman who bore a striking resemblance to Eleanor. My mind struggled to understand the possibility of her coming here. Excusing myself from the company, I made my way to the lady and yes, it was her. Hey, Eleanor. Hey, stranger. It has been long. It has. What are you doing here? I am doing the whole catering thing here, can you believe it? Rubbing shoulders with all these high-profile folks? Well, congrats on that, Eleanor. Thanks, but honestly, you've got a part in this. We might not have come this far if we were still dealing with some holdbacks. Pretty bold statement, I've always wanted what's best for the family. Sure thing. We shut down the old diner and leaped into the catering world. Even came up with the idea, and surprise, surprise, it's turning out to be a pretty profitable deal. Now we're crisscrossing the state, catering to all sorts of events and fancy clients. We were in Glendale a few nights ago when Mr. Johnson asked us to cater for his party. You know, I never wished any ill will towards you, so I genuinely hope you're doing well. How's Ethan? Better than he used to be. Oh, and here's the kicker. Ethan has even moved on with his love life and snagged himself a new girlfriend. Usually he accompanies me on these trips, but this time he's off to Hawaii with her. She's a real delight to have around. Gorgeous like a living doll. She just seems perfect for my kid. Good for him, Eleanor. By the way, what are you doing here? Who called you here? I'm sorry, but you are too poor to be here. You have not changed at all, have you? 
forget about me. Look at you, silly. Still trying to get your way around the rich. Old habits die hard, sweetheart. You will always be that girl from Fairfield, the one with nothing to offer. I'm here because I belong here, just like anyone else. No one called me. I came here with Harry, my husband, and also Mr. Johnson's son. Eleanor's face displayed a look of shock, but she played it cool and mean like always. Don't think he will stick around forever. People like you never stay for long. Eventually he will see that he deserves someone better, someone from his world. Harry is just naive. You have no idea how far I have come. I have a name in the hotel industry now and... Never mind. You know that your wealth does not define you, just as my past does not define me. I've worked hard to build a life for myself and I'm proud of where I stand today. Well, aren't you full of yourself? You may have managed to climb the ladder, but you will never truly fit in with people like us. You will always be an outsider. You know, I used to think that way too. But I have learned that truly belonging does not come from material possessions or social status. You've certainly grown bold, haven't you? Well, we will see how long that lasts. I have seen it all before. It is good that even got rid of you. If you want to delude yourself, go ahead, but do not expect me to change my mind about you. I was all set to deal with Eleanor and show her I meant business, but suddenly, ping, the sound of a spoon hitting a glass stole the spotlight. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, if I may have your attention, please. Tonight I stand before you with a lot of pride and joy in my heart. It is a momentous occasion as I pass on the torch of responsibility to the next generation. My son, Harry. I gave Harry a quick look and our eyes connected for a second. I smiled at him like an I'm proud of you smile. His dad just handed him a whole business making it his day to remember. It was his special day and I was seriously determined to not let anyone from my past mess with the great thing I had going on at the moment. Taylor. My dear daughter-in-law, you have shown us the true meaning of strength and resilience. From the very moment I met Taylor, I was captivated by her tenacity, dedication, and unwavering commitment to her dreams. Her journey from a small town to the chaotic city of Los Angeles has impressed me. She is a remarkable young woman who has not only touched my son's heart, but also brought a lot of joy into our lives. Tonight... We celebrate not just the passing of the torch to my son Harry, but also the recognition of Taylor's extraordinary talent and potential. It is with absolute delight that I announce that Taylor will be taking charge alongside Harry as a key leader in our business. It was totally my I made it moment. To have Mr. Johnson, the big shot behind this business, acknowledge me and hand over this huge responsibility. I can't even put into words how much that means. And with everyone clapping and cheering, Harry made his way to me, just leaned in and gave me this sweet little peck on the cheek. You deserve this as much as I do. I love you, baby. Cheers to us. I love you too. In the middle of all the hype, I totally didn't forget that conversation I was having with Eleanor earlier. And now, with this huge announcement, I was low-key itching to see her reaction and maybe just drop it in on her. So, I scanned around and there was Eleanor right in sight. Hey, I just swung by to soak up this moment. You know the one where I get to show you how off the mark you were about me? Oh, the golden days of your doubt. Remember when you thought I'd crash and burn in this world like a hot minute ago? I had valid concerns, okay? I mean, how could he... No, 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 he got it all wrong! Well... Those worries just got upgraded to my achievements. Co-running this business with Harry, living the life I've always wanted. I didn't level up for your approval, but I can't deny that it's pretty satisfying watching you squirm. At that moment, a hint of satisfaction crept over me because it seemed like karma was doing its thing perfectly. With a little smug smile, I looked into her eyes, somewhat looking down upon her, feeling a boost of confidence. Revenge might not be the noblest thing, but seeing Eleanor's jealousy written all over her face was a pretty satisfying win. It's been about a week since the Big Bash, and I'm pretty sure Ethan's back from his vacation by now. Eleanor must have filled him in on the whole deal, too. The feeling of proving himself to those who once doubted me, I cannot even put it into words. It's like a reminder that you never know what someone's really made of, and that even the biggest skeptics can be proven wrong. 
with Harry right there beside me, we are juggling not just one but two businesses. For the Evans, a lesson learnt, and for me, well, let's just say I'm living life to the fullest, rich in every sense of the word.